why have rules? Why do we have rules? To help us think about that and to discover what our own private thoughts are, we've asked the boys and girls of Emsey First School to share their thoughts with us. It's a good rule not to go with strangers because they might take you off somewhere and, and never bring you back again. If we didn't have rules, it would be good because we could do what we like. If you've got a little baby brother or sister, keep them away from electricity because it could hurt them. You're not allowed to skate on thin ice because you might go through and drown yourself. You, you must never touch hot things or they might burn you. It's a good rule not to run in the corridor because you might fall over and hurt yourself. It's a good rule not to throw things because it might go in their eye. I'm not allowed to chewing gum at home because it might get stuck all over the place. If you've got a little baby brother or sister, you should keep them away from match matches because they might burn something. You're not allowed to go near deep water because you might drown. It's a good rule not to put grass down people's necks. Hello. If I'd been to your school and asked you, why do we have rules, do you know what you would have wanted to tell me? Well, have a little think about it now as Helen and Ben from MZ share their artwork with us. Now, Helen, tell me about this first one. What's happening in this picture? Skating on the ice? Skating on the ice. Yes. And he didn't read the sign and then he was drowned in his and he's and he's shouting, shouting help, help, isn't he? Yes, because he didn't see that sign saying thin ice. He should have paid attention to that. Ben, what's happening in this one? That a little boy hasn't looked before he crossed the road and when he crossed he saw the car come and the car ran him over. Yes, or perhaps he didn't even see the car because he wasn't looking. Perhaps if he'd been looking he wouldn't have got knocked over. And here's one. A little girl has got lost because she didn't pay attention to what her mummy told her and she's, she's crying and she's in a place for lost children. And this one, well, we all know that we've got to beware of the bull, as it says there. And there's the bull looking very fierce. And here's one telling us not to throw stones or we might break windows. And somebody's thrown one and broken a window. Here's another one. Oh, there are two very sad little children having a cry because they've lost their mummy because they didn't listen to what she told them. Thank you very much for bringing those pictures in to show us all. And I think you'll agree there's some good advice for all of us there, young and old. And a good deal of wise thinking went into that artwork, don't you think? Well, we'll be sharing some more pictures in just a few minutes. But first, I want to tell you about someone I hope you never have to sit beside when you're having your dinner. She's in today's story, so let's go and get the storybook. Today's story is called The Tale of Mucky Mabel. This is the tale of Mucky Mabel, who had no manners at the table, who blew her nose on the serviette and made the tablecloth all wet who spat the gristle from her meat so hard it travelled twenty feet. Her parents always dreaded peas, for Mabel could not handle these. Like emerald bullets they would fly and wallop someone in the eye. No matter how her mother tried, those peas found somewhere small to hide. Imagine having guests to tea exclaim, Oh look, I found a pea! Not in the soup or on a plate but nesting in the fire grate. Mabel, keep your elbows in, they'd say, but she would only grin, or maybe kick them in the leg, or cough up clouds of scrambled egg. Mabel, use your knife and fork, and whilst you're eating, please don't talk. But Mabel did not wish to hear, and shoved her spoon into her ear, and blowing bubbles in her tea said, please don't talk like that to me. For years it carried on like that, with Mabel getting pink and fat, and both her parents off their food because their daughter was so rude. should happen. By and by, a piglet wandered from his sty, and hoping for a bite to eat, went trotting into Mabel's street. 
The smell of cooking wafted out and caught the piglet up the snout. The Sunday roast, the Yorkshire pud. Aha! The piglet squealed. That's good! At least it meant if pigs could talk, that's good as long as it's not pork. While Mabel's mum popped to the bin, through the door, pig popped in. And seeing no one else was there, it plonked itself in Mabel's chair and tied a napkin round its face and bowed its head and said its grace. Oh, there you are, said Mabel's mum. I called to you, but you didn't come. Good girl, you've used your serviette, said father. Then there's some hope yet. They ate their lunch and sat agog, not knowing Mabel was a hog. No gravy spilled. No peas were flicked, no tantrums, and no noses picked. Lunch passed peacefully and well, until some farmer rang the bell. I've had a piglet disappear, he said. I heard it came in here. Said father, I do beg your pardon. Uh, have a good look in our back garden. The farmer said, oh, very good. Oh, don't let me interrupt your pud. The farmer went into the back and bundled something in a sack. Something that was plump and big and snorted loudly like a pig. I've got it, Ta, he called and went. Said Mother, wonder what he meant. He's lost a pig, so don't get flustered, Dad said. Mabel, pass the custard. That story was told in rhyme, and I hope you enjoyed it. Poor old Mabel. If you were her friend... How do you think you could have helped her? Now, Helen and Ben are going to share some more artwork, artwork with us from their school. And it's all about rules again, isn't it? Here's one saying, don't shout in school. You don't need to shout at the teacher. And here's another one that says, don't eat and don't drink strange things. They could be very dangerous and make you very ill indeed. And here's somebody saying, don't annoy me. Because we, we mustn't tease other people, must we? It's not fair. Here's somebody being told not to run along the corridors. But they didn't pay attention and they've fallen over. This person's fallen over as well because they didn't pay attention when the teacher said, don't lean back on two chair legs. Because though they've had a nasty bump on their head. And here's somebody being told not to speak to strangers. That can be very dangerous and you mustn't do it. Neither must you knock people about or push them. They might fall down and hurt themselves very badly like this one. And if you've got a dog and you're out in the country, don't let it chase lambs or you'll be in a lot of trouble with the farmer. And do take care when you're riding your bicycle so that you don't fall off and hurt yourself like this little boy has. And if you've got nice friends who lend you their toys, do take care of them because if you don't, they won't lend them to you anymore. Well, I think you'll agree there were some very good ideas from the children of MC School. Helen and Ben and me have to say goodbye now. But before we go, here are some more thoughts from the children at their school. Say goodbye. If we didn't have rules, everybody would be unkind. If people let the dogs up, their dogs off the lead, they could go into the field and chase, chase the sheep. It's a good rule not to be fighting in the playgrounds because you could get hurt. It's a good rule not to throw hard tennis balls at windows. Don't play with broken glass because they could cut the cell. It's a good rule to remember the highway code. It's a good rule not to run across roads. It's a good rule not to throw stones at people. It's a good rule not to push people. When you're playing football, you need um, a referee.